message written in rhyme pathetic Teachers among the students and guiding the Mr. Wicked Infected with their lies and their alibis With their third eye blind out of line they try to prophesy I and I unfold the mystery told The futuristic ground to the days of old Make straight through the path of the one voice call Truth shines back again two times in a second coming I am the messenger Descendant, master to the apprentice, please to release and reveal. Let me as presence forever bless it. I believe it if Josh said it. Word of life came alive in the scriptures. I read it. All oh, hell we prevail, the tribes of Israel. Flow through your weak pursuit to conquer and line up the tribes of Judah. Don't let them fool you. Before this, the foolish get rushed. Don't slip, you never knew us. I am the messenger. I am the messenger. Man. You know you can't be in here, man. You can't be in here, man. You gotta go. You gotta go. Come on. You gotta, you gotta go. Come on. This is Chubby. Chubby is, <laughs> is a, you know, he's a breath of fresh air. Just, um, you know, just being in, locked up in this music industry for a few years now. You know, it's cool to just get some new insight to Jason. And Jason's been, it's funny because, you know, I'm talking to Jason, like, you know, I wanted to get a bounce. And I was like, hey, yo, we've been in the fire for the past four years, you know, and, He's like, that's cool, man, because I've been in the desert, you know, and I, I love yeah. that saying because, you know, he's like, man, I've, I've been in the desert just, just focusing my life and getting things straight. And it's such a good balance to have Jason come in the mix and just give us a new perspective. And not only is he completely talented and he's like next level musically on the guitar, um, just his, you know, his spirit and, and his friendship and even just his brotherhood, is, is it, it means something. And um, I think for us, you know, the last album, everything was, a, was just a big whirlwind of things for us, and you know, a lot of times we burn ourselves out just working too hard. But um, it's refreshing because everything that we're doing now, we get to redo it and relive it through Jason. You know, like I was saying, when we did the Matrix video, it was like we walked in, it's a huge set, and we're just like, cool, you know, where, where's where's the coffee, you know? And Jason was like, dude, this is a video set, this is tight, this is crazy. And so just to see it from his eyes, he's like, you know what? This, this is crazy, man. I'm grateful, you know. Yeah. I don't ever want to get jaded to the point where it's like you take things for granted, but it's like, man, we're gonna get to Europe, you know. And before it was like, I want to go back to Europe, but now it's like, man, I can't wait to go to Europe. So, you know, he's going over there for the first time. He's gonna go to New Zealand, Japan, Australia for the first time, so we get to relive it all over again. And I just take it as a job, and I just take it as, you know, I gotta do this, and you know, you just, man, every day is a gift, and, and we're, I think we're just enjoying it a little bit more, recognizing that. Music started from day one, surrounded by it. I was in my family. Then on, started playing guitar when I was about 12, and uh, spoke it better than I speak English. So. Obviously, when you're a teenager, you're all rebellious and you want to play the heavy music. Zeppelin and Sabbath, probably first two. Somebody tried to get me to buy a Kiss album, but that just wasn't my thing. We got into the classical world and did the flamenco style and Spanish style guitar playing, and then um, the jazz and, and uh, fusion. And um, that whole world opened open doors into music I didn't know existed. And I uh, got into some Pat Metheny and Kot Key. And, and I got turned on to uh, Phil Keggy, who, who uh, came and did a track with us on this album, which was pretty awesome. Now, if it's good, I like it. There's no boundaries. Not a big country fan, though. Well, I started playing guitar when I was about 12. And um, it made sense immediately. And so music was the language. So then I started uh, picking up piano and drums and, and uh, really anything that made racket. And I got my hands on it. Uh, we made it talk, so. Living Sacrifice was a, was a, well, it wasn't the first band I was in. It was the first band worth mentioning. And uh, we got together in 89, got signed on an independent label out of Nashville. And we were all kids. Uh, 16 years old and put out our first CD and thought it was the greatest thing in the world 
and uh, then we hit the road. We put out four CDs in seven years, and then um, out on the road, uh, I ran into the guys at POD. We toured together, and um, a lot of good times. When they were in our neck of the woods, they all crashed at our pad, uh, and vice versa. And I always remember joking with them back in the day, because they always talked about taking on a second guitarist. And they're like, Jason, you know, you, you'll be the guy. But anyway, uh, things weren't cracking with uh, Sacrifice and uh, I stepped out of the picture for a little while and started a company in Little Rock and I uh, just taught music. The theory side of music and teaching music is something I love because uh, it applies to every part of your life. So uh, I kind of miss that a little bit, but anything I can get to do along the way to help someone pick up an instrument, try something out, um, I'm all for it, especially like keeping music in, in public schools and programs that get kids started on music they couldn't have started. Um, on their own or maybe not been able to afford it. Um, if you get an opportunity to hop in and play something, uh, it'll change your life in a lot of different ways and you never know how it'll end up. And um, then the POD guys uh, gave me a buzz and uh, here we are. So we're gonna see what happens. Second Corinthians 5.17. Oh wait, I know that one, I know that one. You're a new creation. That all old things passed away and everything's become new. Writing the record, I came I came straight out of Little Rock, Arkansas, for those of you that don't know. And uh, I strolled straight up into San Diego, where it was just a whole new world. But it was a great world. You pull up and you've got the tribal warehouse with all the gear, and then you go through and, the, and you've got a tattoo shop. And you go through and then there's our jam room, where, we're, where we wrote the, the new stuff, and where we'll, we'll be rehearsing. And then you go back and they've got the low riders, they're getting decked out and, and all the walls are tagged and watching that artwork get done. It was a beautiful experience and you get your pool tables there where I can take everybody's money. It just was a great atmosphere to get in and, and be grounded and write from your heart. If anyone's out in San Diego and you get a chance to come by, you'll see what I mean. Good stuff. Are we done? Are we, is that it? Did you get enough? I'm sure you did. What's up everybody, we're POD right in the heart of San Diego right now writing our new record called Payable on Death and uh, we did it at the homie spot tribal warehouse because this is where all the flavor is this is where we get inspired this is where all the homies come and kick it so we're gonna take you on our little little adventure through tribal warehouse to show you what's up first off we're gonna show you this little birdhouse right here ever since Jason came from little town of Little Rock he's been hooked on Mexican food so he's down at the shop every break that we get he's down at he's down at freaking Regal Birdos Jill Birdos, Hill Birdos, Albertos, Tacos al Gordo. So we're not gonna mess with him. Right? Yeah, he's getting his Mexican food on right now, so he's not here with us. First things off, we get some freaking piranhas, dude. Getting crazy up in here. Don't even put your finger in there, dude, because they'll snap it right off, dude. It's a cruel world. It's good. That's a cruel world. Yeah. Beaky beakies. <laughs> this is what the tribal dudes eat. Actually, just fucking my inspiration. This is where Trey spends most of his time with Rice Directors. Writing bass lines or whatnot, right there, the inspiration, my brother. Bass lines get real fucking Coming through here, but check this out. Everybody remembers this fundamental right here. We had to give it to them because travel has been down for, uh, since day one. You know what I mean? And this is my boy Carl's office. You know what I'm saying? One of the kingpins. Oh no! Another freaking POD flat. It's cracking. Check this out. Dude, I got a gambling fetish, dude. I'm crazy. Stop. Keep it rolling. What? Ah. Ah. Travel wins again. Travel wins again. It's probably big things. I don't know what we're talking about. This is all the art over here. Look at this. Art it's everywhere. By everywhere. Art everywhere. Art on, the art on the floor. Art on the walls. The T star. He had it made out of stained glass. Are we talking some heavy business? <laughs> Or if we come through and it's like, hey Bobby, dude, you know, I, I need I need some black tees, dog. Is it cool if I hit the warehouse, dog? Back in the seat. And they say, it's all good, dog. Whatever you It's need. all good, dog. What do you need, dog? <laughs> big thing, big thing. All right, dog. What do you need? The tees? Boss, the boss, boss, boss. Man, oh, obviously it's the, it's, the, it's, it's the granddaddy of them. It's kicking it. It's comfy. It's down it to up. earth. It's humble. It's straight. We got art everywhere. Look at it. So this is Bobby Big Things. Just check it out, man. We got everybody. Look at it all, man. Look at that, dude. That's a beautiful thing. You know about this? Yeah, show that. 
you know about that, dog. Show the toes, dude. They don't be getting the toes, dog. <laughs> That's some boxing gloves. Yeah. <laughs> see? see, this is the thing. This is the thing. Up here in travel, dude. It's like it's not just clothes. Everybody gets everybody gets their train on. You know what I'm saying? Slow down. We humble, but the thing is, dude, it's like we still get our training on. If someone wants to get beat down, they're gonna get humble. Bottom line. Yeah, we're you know what peacemakers, but you know yeah. we don't we about Peacemakers, but you know what I'm saying? Step up, your, you know, become face breakers. See how crooked that back is? That was some hours of poundings, partner. Okay, look at this. this is all. This is the top floor. Now we're gonna roll down downstairs. Hey, oh, oh, this is the vault we're going to. And basically, you pull in apparel companies that think you was OG. Uh uh. Check this out, dog. Oh, dude, I need to get Look at this old school stuff right here, man. They kept one of everything back in the day. Look at this, man. This started a long time ago. This is, is Ghetto Stry Lee up in here. Look at that. One, two colors at the most. This goes down the line. Big things, San Diego, big things. One of everything, and this is a lot of stuff, straight up. And to be in business for a long time, doing the thing is, is innovative because a lot of companies come up and fall off, you know what I mean? But travel sticks to the street and they stick to what they know, and that's homie style, and that's just being real, bottom line. We talk to smack because you know what? Some people get locked up in this piece for never days. Get, never get seen again. Later, dog. About the sun, you know what I mean? Ready to record hard work? No, it's a tough job. I mean, you know Somebody's what I'm saying? Someone's got to come down to freaking Mexico and eat the lobster, dude, you know, and get inspired. I want to experience it firsthand, that way I can share the love. What do you think about Mexican inspiration? Oh my gosh. Keeping it real. Only half hour away from home, but I feel a million miles away. Someone's got to do it. What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we doing big things or what? Are we doing big things? You get the zoo's ear, dude. What's that? Bracelet. I need some jumping beans, homie. We should be in the studio writing a wreck right now, but instead we're down there having lobster. We're doing big things. We're doing big things. Hey, what's up, dude? 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 parents used to always have these wild parties and stuff at the house when we was young and have their friends over. I used to just go to sleep listening to all this different music, R&B and stuff like that. So that was my first um, real strong introduction to it, is that my parents just had it around the house a lot. And my dad, my, my mom and dad were so young when they had me. You know, they were, they were 15 when they had me. And so they were kids themselves, you know what I mean? And, and the music they listened to was, my dad's an old hippie, man. He liked the old rock and roll stuff. I think I first noticed music from all the um, wild parties my family used to throw when I was just a kid. They used to have crazy parties and they were into like Led Zeppelin, ACDC, just hearing the classic hits, you know? Yeah. Like playing in the room. And um, like I said, I come from a young family, so they were mostly into rock music. We used to play these long vacations and stuff like that. We used to sit in the car for hours. They had like an A track tape player, and it's like I remember listening to all these old songs like Marvin Gaye and and Earth, Wind and & Fire and Steve Wonder, Minnie Rippleton and stuff like that for hours, man. And it's like, you know, it was just, that was my first introduction to actually having music like um, hammered into your head, you know what I'm saying? Because you ain't got, you didn't have nothing to do back then but listen to music when you're driving long distances. And then, you know, of course, when you're growing up and you're in, you know, junior high and high school, all the hip hop stuff that came out, you know, the Run DMC and the Beastie Boys, Ill Communication and all the break dancing that went down. And you know, I was never really like a, like a, break dancer or I never really got into pop because I love rock and roll so much but I always like appreciated the hip-hop culture and, and the hip-hop music and I always took a liking to it even though reggae and, and the rock music stuck to me a little more uh, but throughout the years you know what I mean you just learn to, to, to expand your taste to all different types of music and you know hip-hop to this day is one of my favorite music as well. So, I started listening to a lot of uh, Parliament Funkadelic stuff like that. I remember my first Bootsy Collins album was um it had you opened it up and it had these Bootsy Collins Collins glasses shaped like stars. Yeah, they look like stars. That was, that was bad, wasn't it? I listened to a lot of like really hardcore funk and stuff like that, and jazz. And um, soon after that, you know, I started really developing an interest for you know um, music. You know, I started playing um, saxophone when I was like in the fifth grade. So I was playing all these funk records and stuff like that on my saxophone and whatnot. So. 
think what inspires me the most would, uh, would be family and faith and friends. Three Fs. <laughs> <laughs> Musicians that have inspired me, I've listed a few of them. Um, Phil Kegge was a big influence because when I heard some of his guitar work, I was about 10. He wasn't even playing guitar yet, but something got in and grabbed me. Um, and I knew that's, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I still listen to his music today. It's, it's a pretty big part of my life. Obviously, the jazz influence, the Les Montgomery, the, um, you know, the heavier influence, the, Z the Zeppelin, the Sabbath. But those are probably the biggest hardcore influences. Uh, musicians that are, that are up and going right now, I think um, Keggy, Matheny, um, uh, Kotke, guys like that are, are pretty strong influences, believe it or not. And it comes out in a different flavor when you're in a heavy band. And I love rock and roll music. It's like that's that's a part of me that will never go away. The only really bands that, that I'm feeling right now is probably like the Deftones, just because they do their own thing. You know what I mean? And and, and there hasn't really been any other bands that's really hit me or stuck with me like like the old classic rock bands like ACDC. You know what I mean? Like the Led Zeppelin and like the Cheap Tricks and the, the Cars, the bands that first came out doing the things. Those are the bands that really like inspired me and every every other weekend we would go to this place called Spanky's um, in San Diego, like in Mission Beach San Diego, where they would have all the, the dope reggae bands play. And ever since we were little kids we would go see, you know, Steel Pulse and Gregory Isaacs and Mighty Diamonds and you know um, Black Yuhuru and Pato Banta and Ika Mouse, all these like reggae legends that were coming to San Diego because San Diego was, was a pretty hot spot for reggae music. A friend of mine at school's name was Arthur Pack and um, we played in the band together and stuff like that and you know I was uh, also, also a drummer too but um, he was um, playing this song from this band called Slave called Slide and I remember it was like the baddest funkiest thing I'd ever heard he was just like tearing it up in a room and I was just like you know mesmerized watching him do all this slapping and popping and stuff on the, on this bass and but after Dealing with him and Slave, he introduced me to a whole another group of bands like Confunction and um, Lakeside, and, you know, um, uh, Rick James, all like really hardcore like funk stuff. After being introduced to all of those other funk bands, man, I started listening to like um, Cameo. And Cameo back in the day, I don't know if you guys know, they was probably one of the funkiest bands out. Um, I was it was this song called Cameosis. It was like one of the first bass lines I learned. Uh, my roots are jazz, funk, and like R&B. Seven to eight, you know, I remember being into reggae music and uh, listening to even like bands like The Police. They brought out kind of a reggae sound and uh, <clears throat> my dad was into reggae music and on my dad's side of the family, they were all into reggae music. And um, just growing up as a kid, I remember listening to Bob Marley and you know, there was bands like The Twinkle Brothers and Black Uhuru and Steel Pulse that I remember listening to. Uh, Dennis Brown, Freddie McGregor. The yeah. vibe is cool, the lyrics were always positive. Well, not only reggae music, but I was more into more of a soulful type music, rather. And I love rock and roll music, but I was more into uh, hip hop music and, and reggae music. I think mostly just for the culture. And um, But you know, now, I, whatever's out there, if it's hot, I'm feeling it. You know, I like to go to live shows. You know, nowadays it's just like I just keep my ear in the streets and whatever's, whatever's cracking. What's up, everybody? And one of the reasons why we decided to come here because so much art and diversity in here. A inspiration. Lot of, a lot of inspiration. A lot inspired a lot of inspiration. by a lot of people like uh, C, Chaz, you know, Dime. Bates. Yep. Yep. Who else? So many others. Shepard Ferry. Oh, boy, those, Brisk. Those. Zodak. Throwing some map pieces down here. Cartoon. Abel. I mean, all these people that are just like, they're putting it down from day one. The originators of graffiti. You know what I'm saying? Big some names. of the people. Big names. Big, names. big things. But it's like these people just do it from the heart, you know what I'm saying? It's like when we wrote this record, it's like that's what we wanted to feel. We wanted to bring it back to roots. But like I said, like all around this place, we're here. There's art everywhere. You know what not I mean? To we mention, get to, not to mention the heart of SD. Not to mention uh, the heart yeah. of SD. We're right here in National City off of Home Avenue, just chilling.